Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Air Speed Prime here on my next Legend of Korra Book 4 Balance episode review. This one's going to be for K411, uh, Kuvira's Gambit, episode 11 of Book 4 Balance. And um, yes, this episode had an amazing ending. Like, definitely one of the best cliffhangers we've probably ever seen. Just this idea that you're left at the end of the episode not knowing, like, if any of these characters are dead or alive, basically, you don't know uh, who got, who maybe got hit by this explosion, if they all survived, missed it, or what. But it was a really kind of big moment, um, and it just, it, it was another mo moment that really got over just how villainous Kuvira is, that she was willing to do this. And the episode set up that Kuvira Batar kind of romance in such a way that. It was made all the more powerful, and you absolutely despise Kavira by the end of the episode, if, you've, if you haven't already just despised her over the course of the season. But uh, even beyond just the kind of amazing conclusion, there were some very nice moments throughout the rest of the episode, some nice kind of character reunions, everything got intense, like the, this was definitely set up for the finale, like, if they decided to do a three-part finale, uh, based on this episode, I don't think anyone would have had a problem with it. This really felt like part one of the finale, but if it's, it's if this is only working as the setup, all the better. And um, so, yeah, I uh, really enjoyed the episode. I don't really have um, many problems, um, but uh, yeah, let, let's get straight into this. Um, for, first of all, I just want to get these out of the way in case I forget them as I go through them. Uh, lots of m kind of more of the minor characters, we get to see a little bit of it little bit of and uh, some shots of uh, Tano and the wolf bats and that kind of gang that he hangs around with. We saw them for a little bit as the evacuation was uh, proceeding. We saw Gamu and the guard that uh, chased him and Korra away in episode one of uh, book one. Uh, that was a really nice uh, reveal, uh, kind of kind of character comeback. Not not just the fact that we saw see Gamu again because we've seen him a couple of times since. But that, that guard, that specific guard in Republic City Park, uh, Avatar Korra Park as it's called now, um, back, was really great callback, or continuity to see that uh, him back. Uh, we got Kai returning, even though he didn't say anything, Kai and Janora kind of teaming up, even though they didn't really say anything to each other, so, you know, uh, will we get more on those two? Not really sure, but uh, it was just nice to see them on screen to get together and just see that Kai, Kai's there, that's cool. Um, but yeah, lots of those little moments, uh, it was really nice to see that. Um, uh, Wu got a really good moment. Like, we were kind of worried, like, oh, you, you made a good suggestion, Wu, but now you've kind of messed it up. But here we see that he is really involved in the kind of world leader situation in the city. Raiko's obviously making the big decisions because he's the president of Republic City. But Wu, with that inspirational kind of message over the radio to calm down everyone, uh, obviously during the um, evacuation, really worked. Because Mako, obviously, you know, his style is just to kind of uh, do it by the book, you know, read it out, and you kind of made everyone panic. But uh, Wu did it kind of more inspirational, that, you know, like, we're just retreating for now, um, you know, we're winners and stuff like that. It, it really worked to, you know, just calm down the population that this is what they're doing, there's nothing complicated about it, we're just leaving the city, follow directions. Um, so that worked. Um, and the, just the line from Lin at the end, you know, you might not make such a bad Earth King after all, like, worked because he does care about the people now. He, They put him in charge of, like, him and Pema in charge of the evacuations, and it was struggling at the start, but then afterward they were doing it very effectively. So, you know... Maybe he needs a few more moments over the course of the finale, like one or two more scenes, but um, if that's his arc, um, then that's fine. Um, maybe they do need a moment where they kind of just specifically say what changed. Maybe it's just being around Team Avatar, being around Mako specifically helped to him kind of see what he was missing or something like that. Maybe a little explanation scene to kind of show where the changes come from, but very impressed with with Wu in this episode so his character arc is kind of starting to come together if, after kind of uh, worrying about where exactly it was going but um yeah at the Varric Julie meeting once again that was uh that worked um it was interesting to see Julie in kind of more kind of casual clothing she wasn't just kind of a 
in her kind of business assistant outfit or her uniform. It was just really interesting to, to kind of see her like that. Um, uh, and it really kind of added a lot to her character, just that she was more casual here, kind of just showing that she's not just the assistant of Eric anymore, as she says in the conversation to him, that, you know, I want you to start treating me like an equal. And that's still something set up going forward, because the, the big setup here is that she cares for him, and, like, she just stopped short of saying, you know, the I love you thing to him. And Bolin and everyone else there could see it that, like, Varric, we want you to say something, like, emotional back to her, that, like, you really care for her, or him saying I love you or something like that. But no, he's just like, get, on, get, get your assistant outfit back on, we're, we're going back to work, and she's just like, no, as much as I didn't mean any of that, I the one bit I did mean was that, you know, um, I don't want to be your assistant anymore, I want to be your equal, so... I really like that, that it wasn't just, like, a normal, like, reunion, it wasn't just, um... Hi Varica, I'll happily go back to being your assistant again. Julie is really kind of stepping up as a character now in saying this, and this really coincides with the fact that she's speaking a lot more in this book, and this whole Varric romance. I assume that's what it's th they're trying to do here, romance. Um, so that'll be cool to see where they specifically go with it in the finale. But um, yeah, I was I was very impressed with it with that scene. It was a uh, emotional, but also kind of set up that it wasn't just completely resolved there. Varric still has to like understand what's going on. You see that uh, he's like leading workers and making all these dragonfly um, kind of mech mech suits, um, but they all get destroyed at the end of the episode, which was interesting. Like that, th this is their big defense gets destroyed. Maybe a sa that they a Sammy said she was going to her workshop. I don't know. If is that still a thing going forward? Like, are they still going to go to a workshop? And maybe she has something there. Maybe, like, a prototype of it. But, um, yeah, they seem to all get destroyed. Maybe one or two are left. But they kind of seem to set it up. Like, okay, we're going to make one of these things. But no, they made a whole f fleet of them. Then they got destroyed. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, lots of stuff happened in the episode. Uh, the, the reveal of the Colossus, basically. Of the title of episode 12. The next episode is called Day of the Colossus. Um... That was really cool. Like, I, I think everyone expected, like, giant mech tank. But you weren't really sure what exactly it would look like. But, wow, it looks really cool. Um, I assume the idea that they were maybe going for, like, set up over the course of the season is that, like, they used the domes that they took from Zaufu to use as material to make the mech suit. Otherwise, where would they find such a high amount of um, metal from? Or, and I suppose it's also set up with um, the fact that... Um, the, the town in one of the earlier episodes this season, that uh, Yai, the town of Yai, they went there for the um, metal ore deposits. Um, so th th there's a lot of setup over the course of the season for like, why they needed so much metal. Um, and um, I kind of like the, the also the continuity about the fact that they all think like, they to move a weapon of that size, they need a rail, so that's why it's going to take two weeks. And then it turns up attached to the arm of this giant mech suit and all of a sudden it's over like they all of their strategy all of their defenses are not going to hold up against this giant spirit laser weapon and the way kuvira controls this thing is really cool because she doesn't actually touch any of the levers she just uses metal bending for it all because she, she's so controlled at it so that was a really cool reveal about that that how she controls it um and just the, the design of it, it's one of the coolest 3D models we've seen. Um, and definitely like when the Book 4 art book comes out, I'm really eager to see some of the kind of concept designs for this mech suit, to see what kind of exactly they were going for with it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was massive. This core set is about 25 stories tall. And yeah, just the, 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 the fact that it has this laser, you know, it, it's usually stored on the bottom of the arm and then it swivels up and around the fire. Um, really cool if, uh, kind of a uh, design for that and uh, yeah just destroying everything like how do you take on this like when you, the episode also did a good thing of like you see the Republic City defenses being formed you're like whoa Republic City United Forces has that much kind of uh, military might right there like these lines of armies you know lines of uh, normal mecha tanks and stuff like that and you're like Wow, this is gonna be a big battle, and then the mech suit arrives, and you're just and it's just looking down on them like twenty four stories taller than everything else on the battlefield. You're just like, oh, this isn't gonna go very well. It, 
it, it really felt intense that they've just this is going to be a big battle they just made that decision here and now that this is it um and obviously the big battle is going to be next the next two episodes but yeah the, the colossus was really cool and um, what else there's a lot of stuff to talk about in the episode um so yeah um that pretty much ruins the whole republic city defense plan which um it was pretty interesting it really got over how powerful the thing was that you think republic city has this amazing defense with that army and then the colossus just shows up and they're like no um and i also i also kind of like just how team avatar retreated when they saw this thing they didn't try and just take it on there and then they were like we can't take this thing on and the bison nearly got shot out of the sky so they retreated and warned everyone um what next um i suppose that the, the follow-up plan to this is, is what they do is they they can't take out Kavira, what they said so what they decide to do is secretly capture batar um and then kind of try and use him against Kavira and stuff like that and that was cool the way kind of Korra really kind of became like a commander in this episode that she was just like okay i want you 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 and uh, on my team and just this idea that she says to Tenzin, like, I want you on my team, that, like, she's not, like, asking him or anything, he's just like, no, you're coming on my team, Tenzin, um, and then she gets, uh, Jinora and Kai, and the little moment with Milo I also liked, where he's just, just like, sorry, buddy, no, your farts are gonna give us away, and he, he's like, no, and he farts at the same time, so, th th that worked a little moment there, and, yeah, there was, there's only a quick scene, you know, they also brought Boom Boomy along, which was good, um, and they just quickly capture Batar without anyone else knowing, uh, bring him back, and it creates this interesting dynamic because Raiko immediately then surrenders because um, he he probably makes one of the better decisions in that like he doesn't want to just have everyone get killed trying to uh, without really any hope of success taking down this mecha tank so he surrenders and I think it, it's very difficult to criticize him for that decision. You can criticize him for a lot of his other decisions over the course of maybe this book and last book, but he made the right call there, and he's willing to negotiate with Kuvira for the surrender, um, but Batar is going there, so it creates this cool dynamic where suddenly this ship that's meant to have Batar in it is going there, he's meant to negotiate, but he's not there, and so Lin and Raiko are like, well, what's going on, you guys? While Korra, Sue, and Ko are just interrogating Batar in this warehouse, um, and yeah, this was another interesting scene, like really getting it deep into what uh, the Tar's kind of character arc is about, really, and just how threatening isn't going to work on him. Sue kind of using the fact that the family miss him and stuff like that isn't going to work because he said Kuvira is his family now. And Korra just at that moment is like, wait, this isn't the way to do it. We can't torture this guy. How you do torture this guy is by keeping him away from Kuvira. If he's that dedicated, that in love with Kuvira, the one thing that will kind of change him and make him work for us is the threat of keeping him away from her forever. And it worked, like it was really interesting, kind of like it came out of nowhere. Like I don't think anyone could have possibly predicted that that's what Korra would do to kind of get Batar to kind of work with them. Um, just this idea that look, even if Kuvira wins today and like we have to flee the city, I'm going to take you with me, and I'm going to, everywhere I run to keep away from Kavira, I'm going to take you with me, and, you know, until you start working for me, you're never going to see the person you love again, and I was kind of like, wow, Korra really getting in deep there, understanding what her enemies' kind of, uh, kind of weaknesses are, and this immediately kind of gets him working for her, so... That was cool, and it also set up just how dedicated Batar is to Kuvira, in that he really loves her, as set up with the scene at the very start of the episode, and um, that he's the one who says that he loves her to Kuvira, and Kuvira's just like, eh, afterwards we'll get married, and then she kind of has the kind of smile on his shoulder, and his, you're just kind of wondering, like, how in is she into the relationship, and you still wonder even by the end of this episode, like, how much does she care? But uh, I'll get to that eventually. Um, but yeah, immediately he's like, okay, I, I can't do this. And so they eventually get Kavira on the line. And Batar is just like, we have to do this. Like, he's all for the plan, but the second he hears you'll never see Kavira again, he's like, no, let, let's give up trying to go, go after uh, United Republic. And instead, we'll just keep the fact that we have our Earth Empire. And I suppose even just the fact that they're at this point in time, 
Kavir has so much power, they're just kind of willing to let her have the Earth Empire, that they're not going to maybe try and take that back, that once they, that she leaves um, United Republic alone, they're kind of willing to let her be. Like, that's how powerful she's become, that they're willing to make such huge compromises with her, willing to let her just take the nation that she has, just, you can't take this place. Um, and, yeah, and, and she kind of, kind of acts like, okay, like, I really care, um, we're going to make the deal, um, and she says, I'll see what she says, and, yeah, immediately after this, she just fires the weapon at the warehouse, and... It was really kind of crazy that she did that. Um, I think I, I think it was very clear to like see that that was what she was going to do, but just that she was going to like um, betray Batar in some way. That she was going to be like over the phone, either say something like "Oh, I don't care" or um, something like that, where he doesn't actually matter to her anymore. Um, but just the way she did it, where she was just flat out okay to take everyone out if the avatar she she specifically asked the question is the avatar with you and he's like yeah and then she fires so to take out Korra she was willing to take out Batar and that's crazy you see you do see a little bit of emotion on her face and she is on her own you there's only like one or two people there controlling this machine with her so you still don't really know like was there any sort of feelings towards Batar I think maybe a little bit but obviously it was very much like Batar loves Kavira and she just kind of like is like Batar okay um so a little bit of remorse about having to do what she did but just that her quest for power comes before her love for him or something like that and it just really again got over like she is crazy villainous that she would just do that that she doesn't care about basically the other most second most important person in her whole army so what exactly is happening next and uh, yeah just the way the end happens that the the spirit laser hits the place they don't not i don't think anyone gets directly hit by it but basically the the, the sh shot just kind of cuts away as everyone's kind of like jumping away from the explosion and definitely when we catch up with it next it's going to be interesting to say to see who's injured if anyone died and so on uh, i suppose what would maybe make sense is that um it's hard to tell like they, they could go so many ways with it that they could either have batar like mortally wounded and kind of in his dying breath reveal the plan the, the how to take down the colossus to everyone or maybe someone one some other member of his family kind of jumps in front of a blast he was going to take and he decides to work with everyone while someone else is get, gets injured like um maybe sue takes the block the hit for him or something like that maybe was batar senior there i don't think he was in the scene but uh, it seemed to be like the big issue between him and his dad so it would make sense that maybe they keep him alive batar jr alive but it's it's hard to tell um it'd be a little bit weak if everyone's just perfectly fine no one got injured, maybe uh, everyone just got a little bit scarred or something like that, a little bit burned. Um, but if everyone's just completely fine, you take a little bit away from how powerful this cliffhanger is right now, going into the finale, um, but at the same time, you do have to leave some stuff for the finale. Um, so it, it's really hard to predict um, what's going to happen. Like, it's like I'm even struggling to remember now, who, was, who exactly was in the room. Obviously, there was... Um, Opal, Wei Wing, Sue, Korra, Mako, I think Bolin was there, um, and I'm not sure, was a Sammy in the room? Um, not really sure, but anyway, like, who who there could, like, die? Like, I, I don't know, I don't think they'd, like, kill a main character, one of the main characters there on screen. Would they do something where, like, Korra gets injured again this early into the kind of finale? I'm not so sure. Um, I really think if they're doing something, it has to be that Batar gets injured, maybe, because he was tied up when it happened. He was most in the way of getting hit, so um, something with him would make sense to happen, and the Big Fong family, but um, yeah, um, really kind of crazy stuff going on here, and it was, was Tenzin there? Um, I, I really apologize for not remembering exactly who was there. It was just like, 
so much stuff happening in the episode, just like trying to remember everyone in the scene. But yeah, a lot of characters at risk, and that's a really crazy way to end an episode. So yeah, um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else in the episode I wanted to mention? Um, yeah, um, I suppose Kuvira's gambit ended up being just, you know, the idea like, okay, surrender or I'll blow up the city with my uh, giant colossus. So that wasn't anything like overly fancy, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot, so much happened in the episode. Some great emotional scenes, not directly related to like crazy action with, uh, you know, the scenes between Batar and everyone interrogating him, Julie and Varric, um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, just things set up pretty well that um, you, you really wonder what's going to happen next now that uh, this has happened. Like, we have to assume most of the characters survive. How exactly does the battle then take place? Like, how do you have Kavira stomping around in her giant suit without Kor just directly fighting that thing? So I think what has to happen is that, like, as the kind of fl the place is in flames. Like, Batar reveals what happens, and immediately the next episode is about how to take down the Colossus, and maybe the episode ends with the Colossus being taken down, leading to Korra versus Kavira one-on-one -on -one for the Earth Kingdom, as we know is going to happen in the last episode. So, very interesting episode. Definitely in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on the episode. I was uh, very pleased. I mean, you know, this is the last kind of, like, single episode of Korra, you know, we're obviously getting two next week, so it's the last last one. This is the last time we're going to be able to speculate on anything as well. So um, this is definitely an important time, you know, like the speculation going into the finale. Last time we're going to ever be able to speculate on Korra unless comics get made. So that's a big deal. Um, but yeah, once again, uh, in regards to my kind of plans for the videos coming up, um, I'm going to do speculation on the finale on Monday, uh, as I usually do those videos on. Um, on Friday, when the next two episodes air next Friday, I will be doing uh, live reaction videos for both episodes. No, obviously they won't be live, I have to upload them onto YouTube, but they'll be uploaded. Um, they'll be uploaded like later on on Friday. I, I am going to do my reviews and have them up first, and then you'll see my live reaction later on. So um, Just because, you know, m m most people on my channel like those core reviews more than maybe the live reaction thing so they'll just be a kind of bonus thing later on i'll focus on getting the 12 and 13 reviews up and the way i'm going to do it is i'm actually going to re review them but um separately like usually when there's two episodes i watch them both and then just review 12 but I, when i review 12 i already know what happens in 13 because i watched it this time around i'm going to watch episode 12 and um, pause it before 13 starts review 12 um, obviously record myself watching episode 13 and then review 13 and stuff like that so it, it'll be complicated there'll be like four videos on friday but uh, you'll you'll get all that stuff so yeah that's been the video thanks for watching and bye